there you are. Welcome back. I am back in the good old US of A. I was just over in Birmingham in the UK for TCT 360, a wonderful show where I got to connect with friends who I hadn't seen in a long time and meet lots of new really cool people and companies and materials and printers. It was a bunch of fun and I hope you made it. If you didn't, don't worry. It'll be happening next year, and hopefully I'll see you there. We're producing two episodes from the show. We just had episode one not that long ago, and hopefully you saw it. If you didn't, there's a link down below where you can catch it. This is episode two. What if I told you there was a 3D printable resin that could print not just rigid structures, but soft structures? What? What if I told you that resin is also biocompatible. Surely you can't be serious. That fact blew my mind. So I had to stop by the 4D biomaterials booth at TCT 360, and I really had to learn more. Have a look. At TCT, you can find amazing things, and I found a resin-based material that can be both rigid and soft using the same 3D printer. And I get to talk to Phil about that. So 4D biomaterials, and Fordegra is the product that we get yeah. to talk about today. Yeah. And that product can be either soft or rigid. Yeah. So normally when I print with resins, uh, I mean, there are certain resins that are softer. There are certain resins that have uh, more d different mechanical properties that are more rigid or can withstand blows or, or whatever. But you have this a resin that can actually do both. Yeah. And it's biocompatible. Yeah. So it can actually be compatible with the human body. Yeah. Now. And resorbable. And resorbable. So yeah. why is this important? Right, there are a lot of resorbable polymers used today for medical device applications, but you can't 3D print them accurately to make things like tissue scaffolds to repair soft tissue or bone. And those, uh, ideally, you want a, a, a biomedical material needs to match the properties of the tissue you're using it with. Okay, so that if makes you're sense. putting it, if you were putting something like this, which is a, a, a void filling device for something in a, 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 a breast tumor, okay. so that if that breast tumor has been removed and there's a void in that space, you could fill that void with a scaffold in our soft material, and that would stop that void from collapsing and enable the tissue to grow back through that device. Oh, because it's a scaffold, and yeah. so it allows the tissue to go through it, whereas if you were to use a more rigid device, yeah. then it's not going to match the characteristics of the surrounding tissue yeah. and, and it might, the, it might and inhibit. The, it, it will inhibit, inhibit, and uh, the patient will feel it. And that's it will feel good. uncomfortable. So this is the same material right here. Yeah. And this is in someone with a, a giant medical problem right here in their bone that yeah. was dremeled. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the same material. It's rigid, right? Yeah, exactly. Basically, the difference is it's got the same chemical composition, but we just make small adjustments to the synthesis and the mixture. Meaning what? When we're making these materials, we obviously, we buy some of the parts in yeah. and we make some of the other parts. Okay. And we just change the way that we make them slightly. Just slightly. Slightly. Just slightly. Slightly. Okay. And that, when you, when you add that to the way you formulate these, you get the, very, the difference from a, when it's fully cured, so you 3D print it and then you post cure it, and then that fully cured m material can either be soft and squishy like that one or hard and rigid like that one. And the, uh, so the stronger materials like this, um, these will withstand like 300 kilograms <laughs> on, a, on a, you know, an inch diameter or something. So you can drive your car over these pieces. That's crazy. And it'll be undamaged. And honestly, it blows my mind too that we're talking about biocompatibility, things that can be implanted inside the human body and the human body is totally okay with it. These things have been tested on animals so far They've not yet been implanted in the human beings. So, so that's the next step. Okay, so yeah. then this this is just this is just showing you what is possible and coming yeah. in the future. Exactly. Well, on the basis of the data we've got so far, this material is about 10 to 20 times more biocompatible than the materials we're trying to replace. And what are you replacing? We're replacing materials like uh, polylactic acid. PLA? Yeah. So the stuff that people out there are printing with on their consumer machines is right now what is being used to make things that go inside the human body. Yes. <laughs> that, that's the type of existing resorbable polymer that's been around for decades. Decades, And yeah. used as sutures and various other things in the body. So this is improving on that type of polymer 
So, so it could be people out there watching right now in the future may actually have a medical implant that your company was able to make happen. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. Oh, we I love hope, 3D printing. We hope it's going to transform the world of resorbable medical devices. I wish you the best of luck, man. Thank you very Seriously, much. Seriously, thanks for the chat. Dual wire-fed metal additive manufacturing. Dual. 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 That's right. With the Meltio head, dual wire-fed metal additive is possible. And, and knowing that, you know I had to stop by and learn a lot more. Have a look. Dual wire feed DED, direct energy deposition. Correct. Yes. That's my buddy Chris. <laughs> hey, Chris. Hi, you all right? What are we looking at here? So this is the Meltio M450. Meltio, I love yes. that name. Meltio. I love it. Their technology is basically bringing in two feeds of welding wire. Takes Just, about, yeah, one yeah, from yeah. one side. We've got one here. Hey, look at that. So okay. off the shelf, stainless cool. steel welding wire. Welding wire, so, easy peasy. Dead easy, really cheap to use, and capable of printing with stainless steel, uh, mild steel, titanium, things that you can't get as billet and sheet uh, materials. So it's a really easy way of making parts that oh, are that's actually <laughs> near net shape parts that are ready to be finished off. So that's you know one of our early ones. So that's stainless steel and mild steel. And that's together. because it's dual feed. Yes. So, if you... Uh, That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't think about it, but this is a big chunk of metal, so of yeah. course it's going to be heavy. Of course. I mean, that, that is a lot of the weight in that is the build plate for cooling purposes. That makes sense. Cool yeah, yeah. So, oh, to sink away the heat from the exactly, molten... Yeah. Oh, so okay. you have a, a closed-loop water cooling system as well on this. So there's six lasers in the print head, and what's really lasers. cool... Yeah. Okay. So six 200-watt lasers. So it's putting 1.2 kilowatts um, into the melt pool. But what it's doing as well is as it feeds from this side, and there's another feed in the other side there, is it's putting a current through the wire at the same time. So the wire's hot before it gets to the printhead. Uh, I see. This is its standalone system. So it's the M450 because it's got 450 millimeters of build height. That's pretty good. But you can take that printhead um, and get the Meltio engine system standalone and put that inside an existing CNC system. So they can start printing a shape out and then lower the build plate, move it across, machine it, move it back across, carry on printing on it. Oh, I see, I see. So the, the, the whole dual, the wire feed, the lasers, and the, the ability to, to, to deposit, direct energy deposit the metal, is yeah. actually, that's within the head itself, so you can yeah. take that to other machines, and then yes. other disciplines, such as being able to do milling operations, then you can... Yeah. Oh, so is that so, how that piece behind you was made? Well, this piece is the heaviest one I think we've got here today. So this is done <laughs> on a robot system. Okay, but the same thing, the Meltio same head. Thing, same thing, oh. exactly the same Meltio engine system that we put inside the CNC machine. Can I try holding it? Yeah, of course you can. Okay. And you're not limited to just <laughs> one, for this example. This is legit, man. Yeah, it's massive, it's really heavy. And, and you know, we, we've got like um, propellers that we've built for oh, I would imagine. cruise liners and all of that kind of thing. As long as you can control where the build plate is and where the print head is, um, you can rotate both in space. We'll print the spindle and then start printing the propellers off for a big um, ship propeller. It, this, we're not talking about a machine that does something. We're talking about a technology and something exactly, that can yeah. actually be utilized in other mm -hmm. machines. That's I mean, brilliant. This, this essentially is just a showcase for the technology. Looks like And it. yeah, there's plenty of colleges and universities around the UK. So we, we've got 16-year-olds printing off titanium parts. Cool. And then putting it into a Mazak CNC afterwards and finishing the parts. I wasn't doing that when I was 16. No, exactly. <laughs> so we've all seen the, the big prints um, where people are printing off um, yachts and that kind of thing. Sure, because the why not? Print. Yeah, you can do exactly the same with this. If you're only printing what you need and then machining off half a millimetre from the outside, how much time and waste and tool wear that's going to save you. And especially, it's, and that, that savings then, it grows exponentially yeah. as you increase X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Well, that's true. Well, okay, yeah. well, speaking of the savings and all this information, for those that are watching at home, where can they find out more information about the Meltio head? About Meltio? Um, you can talk to us either at um, 3dgbire.com. Okay. Um, and get in touch with us through um, our website there, or at createducation.com. Um, if you're in a college or a university or in research and just want to find out more. Perfect. Hey, yeah. Chris, man. Thanks. <laughs> oh, hey, come on, come on.
Oh! You got your hand. This is the surface where we do it, right? But, but your elbow plays an important part. So what you do, so go ahead and hold your hand up like this. And what you want to do is you want to look at my elbow, and I'm going to look at your elbow, and then we're going to meet in the middle. Just like that. Ready? Oh, yes! Awesome! A drone 3D printing. Yeah, that caught my attention too. At TCT360, there was a booth that had essentially a cable bot with a drone printing because the drone had a hot end on it. It was crazy. I had to stop by and I had to learn more. Have a look. We're sitting on the floor at TCT because that's what one does when there is a drone 3D printing. Why is there a drone 3D printing? So what we've got is a cable bot printer, but we're using a drone to stabilize it because we've simplified the cable system. I see. So a cable bot being hang printer-esque, right? There's cables controlling an effector or whatever's at the end. Yeah. There's nothing on the ground, so the drone's taking care of that. With a normal cable bot, you either have to have enough lines to fully constrain the end effector so it can't rotate, or you can simplify it like we've done and just have three individual lines meeting at one point, so that point is constrained, but it's free to rotate. So we've solved that problem by adding a quadcopter. <laughs> okay, I have to ask, you say it stabilizes the whole system. How, how stable is the system? Not as stable as, <laughs> you know, maybe a fully finished product, but if we turn it off, you'll see it's a lot more stable than that. This isn't a, a product per se, this is an exploration, right? This is more of a proof of concept than that. I a, see. Yeah. Is there a timeline? Are there additions or upgrades that you plan uh, on making? Well, we've got plans, we don't have a, a timeline per se, but. Uh, we wanted to, potentially on the next version, we wanted to have all the spools and motors for the cables, as well as the motors for the propellers, all in one unit. And we would just pull all the cables out and just clip them on somewhere. And then it would use some sort of, like move around, just use machine photogrammetry, vision learning, oh. to self-calibrate, and then just, so all you'd have to do is clip it on and go from there. That's the final sort of vision. Well, I love seeing this sort of thing, right? And we're at a show where there's a lot of industrial elements and mm. you, know, you know, expensive machines that do metal sintering. And, yeah. and, 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 and we come over here to your little section and there's a drone <laughs> 3D printing on a cable bot and it just, it just makes my heart happy. It's large scale printing for almost you know, very minimal cost. Right, well, I mean, I, I've seen the quality of the model so you kind, of, you kind of get what you pay for then at this point. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the advantage is that you can scale it up massively for no extra cost. So oh, we, normally, we normally have all these cables mounted to the ceiling. So we normally have a build volume that's five or six times this in volume. Oh, okay. So like a hang printer, then this yeah, scales yeah. the same. Yeah. And so you have room sized build volumes. Yeah. So this oh, one yeah, we well, printed yeah. yesterday. Uh, so that's probably. So here, have a look at that. That is amazing. Now, obviously, I look at this, and there are problems with this print. You know, yeah. I would look at this and say, "Oh, certainly, there are some things." But it was printed <laughs> with a drone, and I think there's something special about yeah. that. Yeah, if that came off your your Cartesian machine, you wouldn't be very happy. But <laughs> probably not. <laughs> hey, Nick, this is really cool, and obviously something that a lot of people are going to want to find out more information about. Where can they go to find out more information about your drone cable bot 3D printer? Uh, so there's nothing public at the minute. We're in the process of uh, writing all that and getting it out there, but it will be coming soon. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. This is cool. Nick, thanks, man. You might know the name Sam Prentice as someone who builds droids and robots for the Star Wars franchise. You might also not know that Sam himself is putting together something called Death Race. And this death race will happen at the Midwest Rep Rap Festival in Goshen, Indiana. And I can't wait to be a part of it because I've been invited. You want to know more? Have a look. Hey, Sam. Hey, Joel. What are we doing? Well, we're standing less than two meters apart, but we're also playing with robots. Robots. Now, these are were once called wacky racers, Yep. which doesn't really convey the, the epicness that's there. So what is the new name? So the new name right now is the Death Racers. Death Racers. Yes. Death Racers. Death Racers. Yes. Oh. And what is the purpose? Well, the purpose is when I reached out to you before, and I was like, I want to build a robot. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of this kind of YouTube boxing stuff going on with oh, KSI yeah. and those yeah, yeah. guys, right? Yep, yep. So I was like, wouldn't it be fun, even though we've not got beef, to try and decapitate <laughs> a Joel-telling robot? Okay. What do you think? 
I mean, I was I was up for it. It sounded like a lot of fun. I know the YouTube boxers hit each other. We, as yeah. 3D printing people, we would build though. things to yeah. hit each exactly. other with. So, and so the only idea of the robots is, um, I've taken the boom off of yours because you're still a novice. I'm, I'm quite so, novice. So you've been building one of these. Yeah, yeah, I have the parts. Actually, I printed on the Bamboo X1 Carbon. I, I showed it off in my video about it. Right. It printed all the parts, well, most of the parts in, in a day. Yeah, well, I mean, fantastic, good for you. Yeah, Mine's taken a little bit longer because I don't have a bamboo. <laughs> However, I do have Prusas and Enemy Cubics and the Lozbot, which is what made me this one printed on. So okay. the idea is that you've got a boom at the back and when you push the boom over, you then decapitate the robot. Look at that, exactly, and now I'm dead. I'm so dead. You're dead. So you're Hence the death racers. Exactly. So it's kind of jousting meets YouTube, boxing meets 3D printing meets... Well, i got to put my head back You've got to put your head back on. So you now do on. the walk of shame. So Joel is now on the walk of shame. So the, the death racers have a purpose, right? This is the Midwest Rep Rap Festival throwdown, essentially. It is. It is. So the idea is we're going to create a race track. And you know Mario when they're throwing out bananas and all that kind of stuff? I absolutely do. So, I absolutely do. <laughs> yes, I know Mario. I know the mushrooms. Yep. I, I, I know, you know, throwing out the things with Mario Kart. Yeah. I understand that. These don't throw, though. No, these throw the boom around. That makes sense. So the idea is we've got a six mil rod on the back with 25 kilo servos. So the idea is you're going to whip that round and smash your competitor's face in. Or head off. The 3D printed <laughs> faces. Totally. Okay. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. Which is um, hopefully... It, your one's done. So this is the Wexter Joel robot. It's perfect, which is, really. It's you know, honestly. Which I mean, is, should have sent a poet. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, yeah, you know, and hopefully we'll get one of me. You know, I'm no you, but I'm me. You could actually, you could actually take my mini and just take the glasses off, and it's almost there. Well, this is part of the, the problem, Joel. This is the thing, right? Because people were getting us confused. Uh, honestly, it's <laughs> honestly, really here. If you so, could, so you... this is why I'm not wearing glasses anymore. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. I can't believe it, guys. It's the new bamboo. <laughs> no? Okay. I love you so much. <laughs> All right, so Death Racer is going to happen. It's you, it's me, it's others. It's going to be at the Midwest yeah. Rep Rap Festival in a few weeks. Yep. And uh, any predictions? Other than you cheating. <sighs> Man, I tell you what, there's going to be utter devastation at this event. Just people are going to go. Right? People are going to go home in tears. It's going to be spoken about for years. But what I am hoping to do is that when we release these files officially to everybody, that people get on board and they take these things out and they race. And you know, the conventional RC, you know, cars. The idea of this is because it's freely printed. It's very, very simple to, you know, reprint parts when you break them. But you're going to break these things. They're going to go wrong. They're going yeah, to. Yeah. They're going to be smashed up. So, rather than a big robot, we wanted to keep them small put them in your suitcase and away we go. Good okay. luck, my friend. Oh, this is, jeez. Uh, so then for more information on the Death Racers, more information will come out as we get to the Midwest Rep Rep Festival. Yes. People will be able to print their own. There'll be a bomb available. So people have the list of stuff. They want to build it. This is going to be, this is going to be a new thing. Like I, I, I would imagine robot pugilists are going to be battling for years to come. Absolutely. We've got battle bots, 3D printing. I don't want to be printing benches for the rest of my life. I want to be doing something novel and different. Well, unless the Benchy's ahead on the robot that we knock off to... Make sure you see the Benchy headed robot at the Midwest Rat Rat Festival. Um, it's coming very, very soon. Don't worry. Are you going to cad this? Am I going to what? Cad it. Cad it? Yeah. What's cad it? it cad's the Benchy on the head. Oh, cad. Yeah, sorry. You're so it's, London. It's, it's the London You're accent. So London. I do apologize. You're so London. Uh, I could. Do you want me to? Yeah. Okay. That's Leave that it. To you. Have a good rest of TCT, Sam. Cheers, dude. See you at Murph. See you soon. There we go, four more incredible booths to stop by at the TCT 360 conference in Birmingham, UK. I was so happy we got the chance to go out there and take a look, and I can't wait to see what it's like next year. I hope you'll be there, because I'll see you there. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the things, and as always, high five.